Hi, I'm Adam Forgione, and we're gonna talk about wireless today. So here's the deal. I come from an audio background. I used to be a musician, a songwriter. I used to produce albums. I used to mix live uh, bands. So I took all that knowledge that I learned from audio and I brought it to the filmmaking world. Um, I did all that well before I was in filmmaking. So I have a self-taught style. I didn't go to school for any of this stuff. I learned from screwing up and not forgetting. And uh, I still do today. So the idea here with wireless is that wireless is a great way to capture audio, but not all the time. You don't want to use it in certain situations, and you do want to use it in certain situations. So um, before I get into detail about some of the tricks that are in this blog post, um, I started off filming weddings. And when I was filming weddings, I found that using wireless was actually a bad thing as a wedding filmmaker. Because if you're gonna put a wireless mic on a groom while he's in church and he's gonna exchange his vows, if the interference kicks in and you got bad signal, there's nothing you can do. You can't stop the ceremony and, and tell the priest, listen, I gotta, I gotta change a frequency. It doesn't work like that, right? So I started to create a practice of using all hardwired recorders for that. Um, and you can find uh, different links on this blog that relate to that as well. But this is strictly for wireless, and when it comes to commercial filmmaking, big difference. Because now I can monitor it, I can yell cut, we can adjust or change frequencies and things like that. Maybe um, I hear rubbing because the microphone is hidden on the talent, and I can cut the scene, I can adjust, and then we can continue along. We just can't do that in live situations like weddings. So it's important to know that, and that's just the, the style that I took, wired versus wireless. Now let's jump into some of the ideas, the tips with wireless. Number one, let's understand what diversity is. Diversity, in a nutshell, means that the signal goes from the transmitter, the microphone, for instance, or the lav mic, to the receiver, that little box that's connected to your camera or your field recorder that's capturing the signal wirelessly. When that thing has two antennas, that means there's diversity. Sometimes they call it dual diversity, true diversity, switching diversity, whatever you want to call it, it's called diversity. All brands have different ways of marketing that term. But the idea is that the signal is constantly searching for the cleanest version. There's almost like two sub frequencies consistently going out. And if one gets a little weaker, it switches to the other one. And it happens so fast, it's like microseconds. So the idea is to know that it's got your back and it's always looking for that cleanest signal. So knowing that is a great thing. But remember, when you're buying a wireless system, you can buy the cheap ones that don't have diversity or a single antenna on that receiver. Stay away from those. We're professionals and we need to really up our game with that. And to be honest with you, there are a lot of wireless systems that are affordable with dual diversity or true diversity or whatever it is called. So rule number one, stay diversity. I just learned this trick last year from a friendly rep at Electrosonics when I was talking to him, and he gave me this trick. It was called the straw trick, and this is how it works. When you put a body pack on your body and it touches your skin, more importantly, the antenna touches your skin, the antenna signal goes down immediately. And the reason is it doesn't like water. It doesn't transmit near or through water well. Our body is primarily made up of water. We're like a bag of water, basically. So the idea when an antenna touches the body, we're already killing our signal. But check this out. You can take a straw, cut it to size, put it over the antenna of your transmitter, your lav pack, and all of a sudden, the signal will pop back up. It cuts through the straw like butter, and it doesn't get affected by the water in your body. And that's the name of the game. Always trying to get the strongest signal in all situations, because not only are we trying to get it to avoid interference, but we're trying to avoid it to get the best signal to noise ratio. We're trying to avoid it to get, you know, high quality audio constantly. Another thing too, a lot of people didn't know, and I didn't know until recently is if you bend the antenna, you're actually decreasing the quality of signal uh, on both your transmitter and your receiver. Those antennas are specifically designed at a certain height to read and transmit 
for a certain reason. So it's always important to keep those antennas exactly the way they're supposed to be, as straight as they are, and just keep them that way. Uh, sometimes when they're in vulnerable positions, they're bent. So just remember to avoid that from now on. Again, constantly trying to keep the strongest signal, right? So the next thing we're gonna talk about is polarity. So here's the deal. The transmitter is sending a signal, but it's sending a signal like the rings of Saturn. So here's the antenna. They're going around like this and they're going out. So what we have is a receiver and we have the transmitter and the rings are going out and finally getting to the receiver. But if you do this with the antennas, the rings are doing this and they're not really getting to the receiver properly. Of course, those signals are bouncing around walls, so eventually they'll make their way over to the receiver and they'll get there, but it's not ideal. It's not the way you wanna do it. Again, another thing that's gonna decrease the quality of signal, and if you have a range of say 300 feet, guess what, not anymore. So you wanna maximize that all the time. Wherever your receiver is and your transmitter, just always try to make a point to keep the antennas parallel with each other rather than like this or like this. When I was old school filming, with a large camera on my shoulder, I used to have my transmitter like this. I'm sorry, my receiver like this. So the antennas were out there and there is my transmitter was out here and I was doing the wrong thing. I should have had it standing straight up maybe in the back of the camera. So all that time I was doing it wrong, I didn't even know. But I learned about this recently and of course I wanna share it with my peeps. So there it is. Okay, let's talk about scanning frequencies. This is overlooked by a lot of people. They get lazy, they scan it once a week or they scan it once a day. Anytime you change a location, even on the same day, scan those frequencies. Some units don't do it. They automatically have something set and that's it. So you're at the mercy of hoping they get the strongest signal. But if your units can scan frequencies or you haven't learned how to do it, learn how to do it and do it. Make it a normal practice. It's just like putting batteries in the thing. You gotta do it because you gotta maximize your signal. And if you film something inside and you go outside, that frequency that you're on that may have been good inside may not be good outside. So always remember that. Because once you do it, especially in a live environment, it's too late. Um, and it'll save you a lot of headache. It almost sounds a little silly, but I'm gonna say it. Fresh batteries every single time you use your unit, or at least every day you use your unit. We love Energizer lithium batteries. Those are the blue ones, they're really expensive, but they last super, super long. Sometimes they'll have like an 8X or a 9X on them. Um, they are expensive, but they're well worth it because the last thing you wanna do is have your system cut out or lose signal slowly and then cut out, especially when a client's there or even worse, in a live environment where you can't get access to it during an event or something like that. Um, check out those blue batteries. They're a little bit more money, but uh, try them out for the day. You'll see how long they go. They last like four, five, six, seven hours depending on the type of unit you're using. Really good stuff. Change those batteries. Don't forget, don't get lazy, don't get cheap. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the blog post. I hope you got some tips out of this. Go down in the comments, tell me what you think, ask me some questions, share some ideas that I didn't share, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.